<laughs> so we've got Okoth Opondo. He uh, was a Kibra aspirant mm-hmm. uh, for MP in the in the by-election that, yeah. that happened. Yes. Okoth Opondo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are you? Us guys are great, great, great. So um, yeah, we have to with you today. Karibu sana. To go on a conversation in the previous hour, and uh, of course, mm-hmm. be, today being International Youth Day 2020, and we asked the youth, um, why aren't we taking up more positions of leadership? Not politics, but leadership. So I thought you'd be a great person to talk to because you've put yourself in there and... Uh, and you can maybe share with us some of the challenges that uh, that you know affect a young person and make them not want to get into into leadership. So Okoth, tell us your journey. How did you find yourself in wanting to run for MP wa wa Kibra? Kibra. Uliko wa MCA before? Hapana. You know there's this mistake uh, or something that uh, people say all the time that uh, Maybe before you become a president, you should be a governor. Before you are a governor, you should be a member of parliament. Yeah. Before a member of parliament, you should be an MCA. Mm-hmm. But I think every person considers a position depending on what you want to achieve for your community mm. and uh, for your uh, country. Um, I was listening to you people talk before before calling in, uh, yeah. before you called. Yeah. And uh, one thing that really inspired me that um, you must be inspired uh, you must be inspired that you want to see some change happening, yeah? Mm. And it is not all, always about waiting mm-hmm. to be anointed. Yeah. Remember what you were talking about, actually, because I was listening very carefully. Mm-hmm. And you were saying that, uh, why are we still waiting? Yeah. You know, um, if you look past in the history of this country and even the history of Africa, mm-hmm. it is the people in their 20s and 30s who are leading this great continent. Yes. You listen to the likes of uh, Thomas Joseph Mboya, mm-hmm. famously known as Tom Mboya. Mm-hmm. This guy became the chairman of the Pan-African movement of Africa at the age of 29. Mm. If you look at the likes of uh, Thomas Sankar, Sankar. Of, uh, yes, of uh, Bukina Faso, mm-hmm. if you go to the likes of uh, Patrice Lumumba of Congo, you go to the likes of Steve Biko leading the black consciousness, coming back here in the country, mm-hmm. the days when uh, the, the Orengos, the Kirai Murungis in their campus days, you know, yeah. in their 20s. Mm-hmm. So there's no way someone is going to tell you that you are still young, that you cannot rise, because as long as you understand the challenges of your community, mm-hmm. then you can rise up. So here's the thing. We need to, first of all, understand that um, situation, just like the situation we are in right now, make leaders. Yeah. Tough situations are capable of giving birth to new innovations and new leaders. And I do say that this is our time. Mm-hmm. Um, as a person who was born and uh, brought up in Kibra, um, I've been in that community long enough to understand that this is the kind of Kibra that we had, mm-hmm. this is the kind of Kibra that we have, mm-hmm. and then this is the Kibra that I would like to have. If my child is to grow up in this community again, because we are also advocating for not for people not leaving the community, you know, yeah. this whole thing of you are born in one place, uh-huh. you get to the greener pasture, then you leave that community. Then I do say then you are lacking a sense of purpose in life. Mm-hmm. Because we should always try to ask ourselves that, what can I do to make a place better? Mm. That if 10 years, 20 years, our children are to ask us, daddy, mommy, what did you do during your time? Mm. What are we able to say that we did during our time? Will we still be able to quote to them the likes of Tom Boyer, Jomo Kenyatta, Dede and Kimathi, or... Are we also looking forward to be quoted as people who did something? So last year, when um, the area, the late member of parliament, uh, Honorable Ken Okoth, who actually stood up as one of uh, the best performing members of parliament in the country yeah. for a very long time, mm-hmm. using CTF, uh, building schools, uh, mm. trying to give Kibra a new image. Yeah. So when, um, when it succumbed due to cancer, mm-hmm. you know, it was a time now to ask ourselves, we've been waiting for an opportunity. Yeah. For how long are we going? To wait for it so mm. when an opportunity came people were laughing and saying you know you can't be serious yeah i said let's let's do this guys mm-hmm. let's get into this race yeah whether we are winning the seat or not mm-hmm. sometimes in politics not just about winning the yeah. seat yeah you may lose the seat mm-hmm. but you win people's hearts yeah you win the community's trust and you even start changing the narrative yeah interesting in that race we were 24 candidates okay. and i was uh, the youngest candidate in this race mm-hmm. And I came position five, yeah. beating some leaders who are coming from different parts and campaigning with a lot of money. Mm. We did not even campaign. We we were not even able to produce enough posters. Mm. But we were able to reach out to the parents and of the children that we work with, to the parents uh, of our former schoolmates and all that. And we said, we want to reach out to these people. Let us be able to explain to them mm. who we are. 
and what we want to achieve for this community. All right, okay. Because you know, mm -hmm. yes. I'm yeah. going to ask you to mm -hmm. hold that thought. When we come back, I want to get into, you know, at this point when uh, uh, Im Imran, um, uh, or rather the, the former member of parliament, Kenneth Koth, passed away, and there was a gap. A lot of young people don't sit there and say, let me get in. They'd be like, and so exactly. I, I like what you said that what is your sense of purpose? 20 minutes past 8 a.m. We are talking to Okoto Pondo. Yep. And he's going to share with us his journey in, uh, in, in being a leader. And remember, today is International Youth Day 2020. The question that's being asked of the youth of the world is why aren't we getting into the spaces? Why aren't we being part of the global conversations? <laughs> Catch the vibes on air and online. Today's International Youth Day 2020. And shout out to all the youth man, wherever you are. I hope you're not feeling despaired, you know? Also, I shout out to the leaders despair. when you are to be able to follow us. <laughs> My youth to now on. Next See year, them two years from now, go to you. But to know that we're going to be able to follow us. Follow, 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 all right, we've got Okoto Pondo, uh, who's talking to us about his journey in uh, politics so far. Uh, last, uh, was it last year? Mm -hmm. The by election yes, happened last year. Last year, even when Dang. we had editor in studio. Mm, yeah. We had editor Ching, by the way, here in studio. And uh, we were speaking to her from the perspective of when you're looking at this race, it looked, yo, I'm regally watch a football. <laughs> 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 it's opportunity iliko in a cup. Poor kabisa for everyone. If mm. Mariga of all people was attracted Yo. to that opportunity, I'm a pesa ziko poa uki ingia ka MP. Eh, lakini ya haku funga bao. Okoth Opondo, <laughs> who's also uh, one of the people in the race, he was an independent candidate. You are an independent candidate. Right, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about okay. that because when we had editor as well, she was an independent, independent. Can yes, candidate. Yes, she was. Uh, lakini, kwa election. Na wewe hapo tu nenda unambia, mama nani sasa? Suna nyuwa mimi opondo. Wana kusikiza? <laughs> so maybe just very fast also to let you know, editor is a very good friend of mine and uh, we stood together because... Um, uh, I believe that women really also need to rise up in mm. this in this country and they also must really be appreciated. And uh, she was lucky, she was not independent candidate, she was running with the Ukweli party. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Boniface Mwangi is uh, the party that also Boniface Mwangi is part of. Yeah. So, but from my side, I was an independent candidate. So, number one thing is uh, you are not even taken serious from the word go and you really have to tick a lot of boxes. Mm. So, the challenges that uh, we are facing one, you are a young person, number two, you are not coming with a party yeah. then you are contesting an area that is known for a certain party you know and you just want to face these guys you know dinga comes uh, look look at this race like at the top four yeah uh, because i was number i was position five in this race so position one uh, was taken by imran okot who, was, who got the support of uh, the orange democratic movement party that is under raila mm -hmm. position two was taken by uh, mariga mm -hmm. who was under deputy president william ruto jubilee's party mm -hmm. yeah. then position three we had uh, eliud owalo who was uh, getting support from musali mdavadi's anc party mm -hmm. the number four was butichi with ford kenya so yeah. you can imagine already all those parties but we manage again because in the race of 24 candidates mm -hmm. only four candidates were independent the rest were from political parties yeah. like not kenya all these but we pushed them aside mm -hmm. so the fact that we did not i personally did not win the fact that the likes of editor did not win some people have really been championing for the rights of women mm -hmm. and the young people in the community yeah but we managed to push aside some perennial uh, politician mm -hmm. it tells that people are willing and ready to listen yeah. maybe only that we do not have enough time because you know by elections are very short mm -hmm. it comes within a very short notice had we gotten enough time i'm pretty sure we've made, um, someone like me would uh, probably have made a very powerful mark in that community the truth is people are willing to listen yeah. but we must also understand that politics is not a game of sympathy mm. when you throw yourself into this game you must be ready to expect anything do not go there and start telling people you know look at me oh i am a woman oh i am a young person yeah. no when you are meeting odm you are meeting odm as an equal person to mm -hmm. them yeah. when you are meeting uh, william ruto whoever you are meeting these people as equals you have to convince people it is about what you tell people that again will also make uh, make it happen but of course as you say politics is a game of money in Kenya and uh, this is now a shortcoming on the side of young people. Okoth, I have a question. 
Um, yes. With the stats <coughs> we know, we know this country uh, census ilifanyo last year, mm-hmm. and uh, over seventy five percent of the youth <coughs> them. Yeah. 75 percent of our population yes. is under under 35 which would mean that we understand our what we are going through we know what we are going through as a, as, as as youth uh we're the ones who are you know complaining that there's no employment uh and so many other things you would think that it would be a a da that young people mm-hmm. would vote for young people but but it it turns out to be the opposite in the last election 7% of the of the people that went into power were youth, youth. what where is the disconnect is it the money yes um i think that there's so much happening and i agree with you according to the last census kenya has over 70 uh, over 47 million uh, people yeah. and with that one 30, 37 million people are 35 years of age and, uh, and below. below. Yeah. That means we are the people in charge of this country is ours. Mm. We are in total control of what is happening. Because if you look at the workforce, young people, mm-hmm. the people are used to incite um, and fight other people, fellow young people. Mm. And I mean, if we are scattered all over. Yeah. But here's now the thing. Um, I think for a long time what we've lacked as a country, lack of proper mentorship Mm -hmm. for the young people to be able to take over the mantle and uh, now now say it is our country. If you look at the leaders who are serving us, let's just be honest and I just call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Some of these people have been serving even before some of our parents were born, people like you and I, because I look at you, you are very youthful people. our parents, and most of our parents, maybe just born in the late 70s and early 80s, mm-hmm. uh, the people were here. Mm-hmm. And you know that we are still being served by some members of parliament, some ministers, some board members in different parastatals who have been there since the 70s. Some, some even did, did, uh, served during Kenyatta's time, mm. Jomo Kenyatta the senior. So things have not really, the, the older generation has found it very difficult to pass it to the younger generation. There's this feeling that they have uh, like, um, these people, maybe you, when the country is left in their hands, maybe they are a threat or uh, we risk being pushed out. Mm-hmm. And I do say, let us not fear. As long as we're not going to do it in any violent way, a yeah. time comes that change must happen, mm. whether we like it or not. I do not want to live in a country where people go to school and lack jobs, where those who work the hardest and the smartest mm-hmm. end up suffering and dying in poverty. Yeah. I want to live in a nation where every kid a girl and a boy, disabled, not disabled, can stand up and say, you know what, I'm proud to be Kenyan mm. because I went to school, I worked, I can start a business, I'll not get uh, troubled by the kanjos, I'll not get this, I'll get water, I'll get good roads. But those things are not going to happen if we do not stand up. Here's but, where the disconnect is coming from. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. You may allow me to say. Yes. Um, I mean, there's not enough civic education in this country. Mm. So let me ask you, in the year 2017, yeah. quite a number of people had cleared high school in 2017. I have a sister who cleared high school that same time. Mm-hmm. This girl uh, was expected to vote, yet in her entire lifetime, she has never related with anything governance in high school. Yeah. People clear high school at the age of 17, 18, they are ripe to vote. Mm. They do not even know who a member of uh, parliament is. The mm. role are yeah. no longer taught in school. They are just, I mean, it's not just like those days when we had GHC, the geography, mm. civics, and history. Mm. Civics was removed from high school. Yeah. So most of these people do not even get a chance of interacting with the leadership mm. to understand what the governance process looks like. Yeah. The result, they do not participate in this at all. Number two, the politics that is played in this country is a very old and day politics. Yeah. Mm. We need politics that will make you feel interested. The young people of today are not asking who stole land, Mm -hmm. who killed who in which years. Mm -hmm. The young people of today are just asking ourselves, Leo, Nikipeana Ball, Mm -hmm. can my girl or can my wife deliver in a safe place? Mm -hmm. Today, if I get education, can I get a job? Today, if if, if I walk at night, am I safe? These are the important things. And if these issues can be brought into the campaign, mm-hmm. the issues that are near and dear to their hearts, then I can assure you that they'll be inspired enough to turn up, not just to contest, but, but to vote. But of course, I got to ask another question. In, in With that said, right, um, we, we, we the, the same youth... Okay, I have, actually, I have two questions. So one, we have youth who have been given opportunities... <laughs> you had in the previous uh, hour yeah. there are youth who have been given opportunities while he campaign to mm-hmm. 
case in point, Babu, we know whose case is still in court. Uh, we've seen Jagu as well. Um, who else? We've seen, we've, I mean, we've, we've seen here and there youth leaders sort of letting us down. Um, and then another question is that what you've raised that... Um, uh, uh, that it's old politics that's at play. If you bring for youth the issues that affect them, then they will want to be involved. But then the reality is the youth are voting. They are voting. Mm -hmm. Even with this mm -hmm. as and you know very well that you don't care about this, then why are you voting for this person? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, we also have to note that uh, things are changing. The fact that now we can even see very youthful faces in parliament, youthful fa uh, faces in the cabinet, mm. it tells us that at least in as much as yes, we're not moving at the, at the pace that we want it to go, yeah. but things are happening. But I also want just to be very clear, and, and uh, because I'm a biggest, I'm, a, I'm one of the biggest critics of this narrative that we are creating all the time, mm -hmm. that there are those few young people being elected and they're not representing as well. It is the same same narrative that is also used on women, yeah. that you know what, we gave women power, but look at them, look at Governor Waiguru, mm -hmm. look at this. We are not going to allow ourselves to, to use a few examples mm -hmm. to generalize who the youth are or who the women are. Yeah. The two elected are not showing good examples. Mm. doesn't mean that that is what the youth are because then if we say that mm -hmm. then we should be able even to say that the entire uh, i mean uh, like uh, the, all the old generation that have been part the, the older men who have been in power should also step aside because they are among the most corrupt they, they have been uh, mismanaging the resources in this country mm. so let us not really expect a lot in terms of uh, maybe being role models to us in these people yeah. because i do say leadership most of the time is not even ever about the age yeah something just about the vision mm. the vision that we have for a community so if the babu winners and maybe not are not being the good examples mm. to people yeah. if uh, the jaguars are not being good examples to people it is up to us to keep pushing and push the good examples that we want to the people mm. but i think also it depends how did someone rise to be a leader were you inspired by the happenings of your community or mm. did you contest because of money? Mm. Let's be honest. Mm. Some of this that we are mentioning, money to get to these spaces because of the kind of money or because of the kind of oil that they could put in in their campaign. Mm. But if you look around, there are quite a number of young, amazing people maybe who are never, to, who are never, who are never spoken about in the public. Yeah. They are doing amazing. We're going to take a short commercial break uh, because th the next question, of course, we want to ask is, which came up in the previous conversation is, okay, then I don't have the money to get into politics, but is that what leadership is all about? Catch the vibes on air and online. Want your back in my life to make it right. Say oh, oh, oh. need you know me life. Want your back in my life, make it right. Say oh, oh. need you know me life. Want your back in my life to make it right. Say oh, oh. need you know me life, girl. Right here, right now. Oh gosh, baby, baby, come back. You know you're all that I've got. Come on, come on, girl. Come oh, on, gosh. Come on. Perfect spot, and this goes out to all. Hey, Najoko na MVP say Roho in Nauma. Ah, yeah, only watcher. Relax, <laughs> turn your English out to the mambo's a love. Good books, put away your break up. Eh, put away your say, you know, skinny kai, and ah, kill a kitu ni paragashamazi. Kill a kitu. Touch a cooler in Uga. I taste the same. Naske barid na jifunika, even a sweater, sweater, yakuin and nukaka. Yeah, yeah, oh man. Don't worry. <laughs> I was I'm sorry, I was wrong. Tuma. Why kwani nini? Tuma. 
Mhm. Yeah. Lakini as for respond, sasa si sumkasirukia hata 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 sasa si kwa nataka kutumia hiyo message. Very relax. <laughs> 15 minutes to 9 a.m. It's morning vibes with your captain of good vibes the comic one box and brand bunde here in studio. Na tuna mwangele sha Okotho Pondo uh, on via Skype. Remember you can watch the interview via vibes and radio.co.ke. Tuna get you your politics. I mean leadership, youth leadership. Mm-hmm. Of course, leo ni International Youth Day 2020 and uh, throughout this week in Kenya there've been activities that are, are happening, are going down and uh, even right uh, all over the continent actually there've been uh you know activities in the 254 i told you cs mushera and asema kenyan youth let's strive to plant trees and he encourages that at least 10000 trees should be planted yeah look at your future look at um, your world how what part are you playing to influence um your society i want to shout out uh, Diu Kumbere i'm um, come through up on asema okotho pondo is an intellectual uh we've just lost him on uh, the connection but we're trying to get him back uh, shout out to inen javinsi as well who's uh, locked on vini facts i see you and he had a lot to say about the previous hour on asema mm-hmm. um youth uh, he's explaining us why youth our kwangi na nini na positions yes. why they are not uh, why we're not standing up uh, for some of these positions uh, shout out to mulama nganyi as well who's in there uh, of course talking about courage odiasis and sema youth when you when you yeah, when you puff home uh, do you reason around the bonfires do you eat and rise and play in terms of blue or white color works okay hiyo kwa zake anaongea in so many parables si ile wangu said yangu ni kuna benatash anasema to be a leader you need to be patient committed understanding cause you'll meet a lot of people or a lot of negative people including friends because they will need that extra favor that you can't manage in my position the government gives us a seat a seat in once a year you can wait for the 2k like two months we end up being volunteers of which it's good bora watui wasome mm. also shout out to Ochi Ja Messenger I say in this country youth to mekaliwa na kila na kila mtu in the society no one cares for we and by this there is no way we can get to the leadership position so by the time you actually become a leader ume stress kabisa wambiri anasema youth si ati hawataki kazi ngumu mm. hatutaki kazi ya kubebwa ufala na kutumiwa all right and so on international youth day of course the question is how do we then get into those positions of leadership mm-hmm. and uh, it's really great having this conversation with the Kotho Pondo even if we're not able to maybe complete the, is he back yeah he's back oh he's back so um it's it's really great to see his story mm-hmm. yeah, like, tuapo kwa mtana akasema by the way mm-hmm. sita acha iki tu ipite hivi this mm-hmm. is my chance and we, we, and most of the people who are t- talking in the previous hour saying yes. youth are not given opportunities mm-hmm. youth are not given opportunities okay before we took the break you were talking about civic education mm-hmm. civic education for the for 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 you know for what's happening in the nation will civic education be a game changer Yes, civic education will be a game changer if it is done appropriately mm-hmm. and it is also done with a good intention because yeah. you must also know even how 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 everything is being done. Mm-hmm. If you look at the country today, there's just so much uh, I can say confidently if uh, there's one conversation that we may choose to avoid or um, uh, talk about yeah. that's the conversation of uh, BBI mm-hmm. the building bridge initiative yeah. we should be asking ourselves where are young people in this whole con- con- conversation mm-hmm. because one of the issues that came out as uh, when they did their research and came out with the report is that young people feel left out mm-hmm. in the national conversation. yeah young people feel left out in the important things that are happening in this country. Yeah. If we are saying that this document is about the future mm-hmm. and about the prosperity of this country. Mm-hmm. Who are the future of this country? It is not Joe, it is not uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, it is not William Ruto, it is not Raila or it is not Mudavadi. The future of this country are the young people who are actually left out of this whole thing. Mm. They must be involved in this process. And that is the only way that we are going to make people get interested. 
in the nation. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about getting involved. Um, I just want to yes. narrow it down to getting involved because that's where the conundrum comes in. When you look exactly. at youth involvement in leadership or politics, it's as 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 what would I call it? As the wind beneath the wings of the of the leader who's soaring into into leadership. Sisi tunatumiwa tu ku ku kama security, ku ku chant chant, ku imba imba kwa campaigns. Um, but in that same BBI thing that you're mentioning, we said that we felt left out. Mm-hmm. So so when you when you talk about engagement, how does a young person who's listening in right now say, okay, how do I get involved? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So number one number one thing is that um, there's part that also must be led from the other side that is by the government and the organizations doing that. But also the second thing that I also have to admit that as young people, we must also be willing to show up. Sometimes I hear people saying that, uh, you know what, in my community, you have never done what MCA is doing, I've never done what Member of Parliament is doing. Yet when the governance meetings are called, the governance forums are called in your area, you keep on asking, is there something? Are they giving us something? Mm. Sometimes you just need to show up to understand on how the budget of your community is being used, mm. to understand on how the budget allocations are being done and uh, what the progress that your own community is making. That is not going to happen if we don't show up because Part of being involved means that you yourself, you are willing. Mm. What if today, um, uh, maybe a call is made to Combox and Brian and we say, you know, tomorrow there's a forum happening here. Now it is up to you also to show up. You know, if you don't show up, that yeah. is also up to you. Yeah. So even as young people, we must know that we have a role to play. Mm. It's not always of just being on this other side. Nobody actually was brought in this world to do charity for you. Mm. You have to rise up and know that the country is in our hands and the future is yours. Mm. And if the future is ours, then we must rise up and own that future. And speaking about the future, current the current breed of leaders from James Orengo to Murkome to Hassan Omar, all of them were leaders in universities. But do you think the current universities are able to actually breed leaders who we can actually look up to? Mm. Because the current leaders who we have, wako to. Exactly. That's a very good question again because uh, we must also know that uh, different solutions come for different times mm. yeah so there are things that the railers the orangos the the kibakis the murungaru sold mm-hmm. during their time yeah. yes and now it is also up to us to identify what are the challenges that we are going through mm-hmm. we are not fighting for multi-party politics here yeah. we are not fighting for the freedom of expression these things have been attained it is time to say what are the issues that we are fighting for now mm. the issue that we are fighting for is having some sense of direction some sense of purpose that with my education can it turn into an income generating thing mm. with education the skill that i have with the talent with the singing that i do with the dancing that i do with the business that i'm starting can i make a life out of it so what we are looking for is now another crop of leaders will be able to look and say now we are going to make it. we cannot keep on using the olden day tactics to solve the modern day challenges mm-hmm. that is not going to happen yes this is not an error that people will go to the bush to fight in the forest mm-hmm. those days are long gone yes. we are we are in a new we are in a new world in social media we've now been connected better you know today it is because it is, i mean i mean this radio talking to you yeah. before we only had the voice of kenya and getting to radio was a big thing even just announcing that you know tomorrow i'll be here it was such a big thing we didn't have tv we didn't have social media mm. you could not find yourself in a newspaper anytime yeah Today, things have changed, and we must take advantage of that. So here's what I'm saying. The likes of um, uh, the Orangos and that, even during those days, you notice that even now, the student leadership and how they access that position has really been uh, tampered with. Yes. Nowadays, they don't do the direct election as they used to, is used to happen. Yes. So it's even now killing that um, point of raising leaders. It is now like... Um, uh, the people are being appointed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need people to go and campaign with students and actually campaign on issues mm-hmm. and even manage to say that um, campaign should not be about money. Mm-hmm. Because we've seen all the time when leaders give money and when you take their money and I do tell people, mm-hmm. those who say that I let a person you up, please mm-hmm. don't even take it. <laughs> because when you take it, here's the problem. Mm-hmm. If this person wins this seat, he has the power to talk to you the way he wants. He yeah. feels like he owns you. Mm. Nobody owns you. 
when you are going to demand for services, no leader in this country should ever come to you and praise himself that you know I'm the person using the CDF in the best way. I built your that is his job. He asked for it. Mm. Why is he why it is not a privilege? If he can't, we have 47 million people. Other people could avoid for that position. So but, nobody should think that is a privilege leading you. Okay, yeah. uh, before I let you go, this one is yeah. uh this one is a is a big question. A lot of young people even to go to the streets to, you know, voice their opinion, right? They've been met with so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So much tear gas, mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. violence, right? So and many arrests. So many arrests. And uh, you find that a lot of people will say that, I don't even want to voice my opinion uh, because I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to be on the wrong side of the law. Has this been used to sort of silence the youth? No, I don't think it is silencing the youth, though it has been, it is a, it's a strategy that has been used, but we must also know these things have not begun today. Mm -hmm. Any person aiming to be a leader, you must know that it comes with a lot of sacrifice. Mm. You will not expect the person that you want to remove from a certain position to be to be light on you. Yeah. As leaders, we must, ready, we must be ready to know that it has never been easy. Mm. We must also be very good students of history. Even to those who believe in the Bible, for example, you look at the time when the children of Israel wanted to get into that city. Yeah. They asked God that let the sun stand still. We want to fight until we get into the city. Mm. The fight of independence, it was not not easy the fight of multi-party was not easy mm. the fight towards attaining the new constitution was not easy yeah. young people must know that if you are to take over this country then it can only happen when you are willing to sacrifice more mm. and i do say this maybe we've not gotten enough pain mm. maybe the, by the time we get to the point that we'll forget and not look at you as a kikuyu as a lu as a lawyer and i'll get to understand that when you are jobless regardless of your political affiliation religious affiliation you are jobless and it is affecting you when you sleep hungry you sleep hungry when you do not have access to education you do not have it regardless of your tribe mm. yes. these people we must also get to understand that um the issue of tribalism is not even affecting the older generation you notice that they have their own ways of visiting each other and doing everything mm. but if today brian is seen in state house mm -hmm or is seen with Raila, then mm. you become a traitor to your community. Mm. We must run away from these things and get to understand that we are Kenyan and we must keep on doing the things that we are doing. So even uh, maybe before before that one, tomorrow we have a very interesting engagement yeah. happening across the county, mm -hmm. across uh, the county of Nairobi, because uh, there will be some discussions going online, organized by different youth organizations. Yeah. And maybe for anyone who would like to join for a discussion tomorrow, um, using the hashtag Sautiangu Maoniangu or Sautia Vijana, because we want to keep on having these conversations every now and then to make mm. sure that we are in the right path mm. together. I like it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Okotho Pondo. And uh, we do uh, appreciate you as a friend of Vibes uh, for shedding light on uh, this issue, especially on International Youth Day. Uh, we will definitely post the hashtag so that uh, a lot of youth can join that conversation. Yeah. All right. That was Okotho Pondo. I have learned so much. What have you learned? Tough situations lead to new leaders. Mm -hmm. And you should always find as a listener your sense of purpose. Purpose. In fact, for me, that's the one when he just said, as a young person, mm -hmm. what is your sense of purpose? Vibes Radio, we rule the nation in this generation.